Gingivitis, Wikipedia Audio Gingivitis is a non-destructive disease that occurs around the teeth. The most common form of gingivitis, and the most common form of periodontal disease overall, is in response to bacterial biofilms that is attached to tooth surfaces, termed plaque-induced gingivitis. While some cases of gingivitis never progress to periodontitis, periodontitis is always preceded by gingivitis. Gingivitis is reversible with good oral hygiene, however, without treatment, gingivitis can progress to periodontitis, in which the inflammation of the gums results in tissue destruction and bone resorption around the teeth. Periodontitis can ultimately lead to tooth loss. The term means inflammation of the gum tissue. Signs and Symptoms The symptoms of gingivitis are somewhat nonspecific and manifest in the gum tissue as the classic signs of inflammation. Additionally, the stippling that normally exists in the gum tissue of some individuals will often disappear and the gums may appear shiny when the gum tissue becomes swollen and stretched over the inflamed underlying connective tissue. The accumulation may also emit an unpleasant odor. When the gingiva are swollen, the epithelial lining of the gingival crevice becomes ulcerated and the gums will bleed more easily with even gentle brushing and especially when flossing. Swollen gums, bright red or purple gums, gums that are tender or painful to the touch, bleeding gums or bleeding after brushing and slash or flossing, bad breath. The cause of plaque-induced gingivitis is bacterial plaque, which acts to initiate the body's host response. This, in turn, can lead to destruction of the gingival tissues, which may progress to destruction of the periodontal attachment apparatus. The plaque accumulates in the small gaps between teeth, in the gingival grooves and in areas known as plaque traps, locations that serve to accumulate and maintain plaque. Examples of plaque traps include bulky and overhanging restorative margins claps of removable partial dentures and calculus that forms on teeth. Although these accumulations may be tiny, the bacteria in them produce chemicals, such as degradative enzymes, and toxins, such as lipopolysaccharide or lipotiochoic acid, that promote an inflammatory response in the gum tissue. This inflammation can cause an enlargement of the gingiva and subsequent formation. Early plaque in health consists of a relatively simple bacterial community dominated by gram-positive cocci and rods. As plaque matures and gingivitis develops, the communities become increasingly complex with higher proportions of gram-negative rods, fusiforms, filaments, spirilla and spirochetes. Later experimental gingivitis studies, using culture, provided more information regarding the specific bacterial species present in plaque. Taxa associated with gingivitis included Fusobacterium nucleatum subspecies polymorphum, Lachnospiraceae species HOT100, Latropia species HOTA94, and Prevotella dolorum, whilst Rothia denticariosa was associated with periodontal health. Further study of these taxa is warranted and may lead to new therapeutic approaches to prevent periodontal disease. Risk factors associated with gingivitis include the following. Gingivitis is a category of periodontal disease in which there is no loss of bone but inflammation and bleeding are present. Each tooth is divided into four gingival units and given a score from 0 to 3 based on the gingival index. The four scores are then averaged to give each tooth a single score. The diagnosis of the periodontal disease gingivitis is done by a dentist. The diagnosis is based on clinical assessment data acquired during a comprehensive periodontal exam. 
Either a registered dental hygienist or a dentist may perform the comprehensive periodontal exam but the data interpretation and diagnosis are done by the dentist. The comprehensive periodontal exam consists of a visual exam, a series of radiographs, probing of the gingiva, determining the extent of current or past damage to the periodontium and a comprehensive review of the medical and dental histories. H. Osteoporosis, low dental care utilization, poor oral hygiene, overly aggressive oral hygiene such as brushing with stiff bristles, mouth breathing during sleep, medications that dry the mouth, cigarette smoking, genetic factors, pre-existing conditions. Current research shows that activity levels of the following enzymes in saliva samples are associated with periodontal destruction, aspartate aminotransferase, alanine aminotransferase, gamma-glutamyl transferase, alkaline phosphatase, and acid phosphatase. Therefore, these enzyme biomarkers may be used to aid in the diagnosis and treatment of gingivitis and periodontitis. A dental hygienist or dentist will check for the symptoms of gingivitis, and may also examine the amount of plaque in the oral cavity. A dental hygienist or dentist will also look for signs of periodontitis using x-rays or periodontal probing as well as other methods. Complications If gingivitis is not responsive to treatment, Referral to a periodontist for further treatment may be necessary. As defined by the 1999 World Workshop in Clinical Periodontics, there are two primary categories of gingival diseases, each with numerous subgroups. Gingivitis can be prevented through regular oral hygiene that includes daily brushing and flossing. Hydrogen peroxide, saline, alcohol or chlorhexidine mouthwashes may also be employed. In a 2004 clinical study, the beneficial effect of hydrogen peroxide on gingivitis has been highlighted. The use of oscillation-type brushes might reduce the risk of gingivitis compared to manual brushing. Rigorous plaque control programs along with periodontal scaling and curatage also have proved to be helpful, although according to the American Dental Association, periodontal scaling and root planing are considered as a treatment for periodontal disease, not as a preventive treatment for periodontal disease. In a 1997 review of effectiveness data, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration found clear evidence showing that toothpaste containing triclosan was effective in preventing gingivitis. The focus of treatment is to remove plaque. Therapy is aimed at the reduction of oral bacteria and may take the form of regular periodic visits to a dental professional together with adequate oral hygiene home care. Thus, several of the methods used in the prevention of gingivitis can also be used for the treatment of manifest gingivitis, such as scaling, root planing, curatage mouth washes containing chlorhexidine or hydrogen peroxide, and flossing. Interdental brushes also help remove any causative agents. Powered toothbrushes work better than manual toothbrushes in reducing the disease. The active ingredients that reduce plaque and demonstrate effective reduction of gingival inflammation over a period of time are triclosan, chlorhexidine diglucanate, and a combination of thymol, menthol, eucalyptol, and methyl salicylate. These ingredients are found in toothpaste and mouthwash. Hydrogen peroxide was long considered a suitable over-the-counter agent to treat gingivitis. There has been evidence to show the positive effect on controlling gingivitis in short-term use. A study indicates the fluoridated hydrogen peroxide-based mouth rinse can remove teeth stain and reduce gingivitis. Cause Risk factors 
Based on a limited evidence, mouthwashes with essential oils may also be useful, as they contain ingredients with anti-inflammatory properties, such as thymol, menthol, and eucalyptol. Diagnosis Classification Prevention Treatment The bacteria that causes gingivitis can be controlled by using an oral irrigator daily with a mouthwash containing an antibiotic. Either amoxicillin, cephalexin, or minocycline in 16 ounces of a non-alcoholic fluoride mouthwash is an effective mixture. Overall, intensive oral hygiene care has been shown to improve gingival health in individuals with well-controlled type 2 diabetes. Periodontal destruction is also slowed down due to the extensive oral care. Intensive oral hygiene care without any periodontal therapy improves gingival health, and may prevent progression of gingivitis in well-controlled diabetes.